Hello, I'm Katherine Robinson, and in this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of some of my research. I have two labs uh, reflecting the two streams of research that I'm involved in, the Mathematical Cognition Lab and the Impact Lab, and I work with students uh, in both of those labs. My graduate training was in cognitive development, and in the last few decades, cognitive developmental psychologists have increasingly turned to everyday practical tasks that kids are doing in their everyday lives. And so kids are spending a lot of their time in schools between <laughs> grades one and grade eight, and they are spending some of their time uh, learning math in school. And so I'm interested in how their math skills develop as a window into their cognitive development. So uh, I'm gonna show you a couple of tasks that we use in the lab and we work with participants between grades one and eight, and we also work with adult participants. So in the first problem, you can see that understanding that multiplication and division are inversely related to each other uh, really is going to save you a lot of time and a lot of pain in trying to solve this problem unless you have a calculator handy. So for the top problem, hopefully you can look at it and realize that you don't actually have to multiply or divide anything because the answer is obviously 37 because the 549s cancel each other out. If you realize that, you are making use of what Piaget called the inverse relationship between addition or subtraction or multiplication division. On the second type of problem, you can see that you can make your life a lot easier by dealing with the subtraction first. Oh, here's my dog, keeping me company as usual. Um, if you do 398 minus 393, you're just left with five, and then you add that to 5,243. Much easier, much faster than actually doing all the math from left to right. Now, these are techniques that are not taught in schools. And so when you present these types of problems, easier ones for younger kids, uh, you can get a sense of what they understand about arithmetic um, and their, their understanding of the operations of, of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So we use problems with this, like this with our participants to get a window into what they understand. And we are also interested in why there are so so um, many individual differences. Some kids really get uh, these types of problems. Other kids really struggle with them. And one of the really interesting things is that being in school for longer doesn't seem to predict being better at these problems. So for example, a kid in grade eight um, is no more likely to be able to use their understanding of the operations of multiplication division to solve that first problem than somebody in grade six or in grade five. So we are looking at some of the other factors that are related to this. And so right now we are looking at executive function. To assess executive function, we can do it in the lab using iPads and tasks on the iPads. We can also do it remotely. And this is an example on the screen of a remote task that's done via Zoom. And in this task that assesses working memory span, um, children and adults have to watch the pink squares light up in a particular order. And once they're told go, they have to uh, touch the uh, pink squares or take their cursor and, uh, and touch the squares in the same order that they saw them light up in. Go. Go. So this is an example of one executive function task. We also look at inhibition, we look at shifting, and we look at updating. And what we're trying to do is to find out if kids who have better conceptual knowledge of arithmetic also have uh, higher executive functions, better executive functions, and if so, which ones. So that's what we are currently investigating, as well as the link between uh, what you know about arithmetic and how you do in algebra. Our, the second lab that I'm involved in is the Impact Lab. This is an interdisciplinary lab made up of researchers from a lot of different faculties and areas, including uh, English literature, we're looking at computer science, uh, social work, uh, media arts, and so forth. And in this research lab, what we are interested in is using eye trackers um, for people to be able to make art. 
and specifically we're interested in art making for individuals with limited mobility who may have difficulties painting or drawing etc and so we are developing software and tools to make um, eye tracking uh, eye eye making uh, possible with eye trackers we have several eye trackers in the lab. This is an example of one of them. Eye trackers are increasingly small and portable. And so you can see there's the box for the eye tracker, there's the eye tracker in the middle, and there's a pen, just to give you a sense of how small eye trackers are. Now, eye trackers are used in a lot of psychology research, but we're using, it in a, using them in a bit more of a novel way. We have particular programs uh, where, where individuals can essentially pick from a menu. In this case, you can see that they've picked the smiley face from the menu on the left, and they've picked it up, picked it up with their eyes, and then moved it onto a, a scene uh, in order to make a collage or a drawing. And there are lots of different programs that we've developed to do that. The issue, however, that we've discovered is that using your eyes is actually uh, quite a difficult task. And so this is an example of someone who drew a cat with their eyes. Now, yes, it does look like it's something that a kindergartner drew, but it does highlight just how difficult it is. So currently, not only are we developing projects uh, where, where participants um, you know, do paint by numbers with their eyes, or they do line drawing with their eyes and different colors and shapes and so forth. We also are working on a, a video game that we developed in the lab to help uh, individuals train their eyes so that they get used to essentially using their eyes as tools. So here's a video of a participant using their eyes to actually uh, play a video game. So all of that is done with the eyes. And so those are just some examples of uh, some of the studies that we're conducting in both the uh, Mathematical Cognition Lab as well as the Impact Lab. If you have any questions, you are always welcome to contact me and you can also check out our lab websites. Thanks.